Hey PWAP gang, that's Pulse with a Purpose gang. Um, we're here today and getting ready to fix some dinner. And tonight it is going to be some Mexican breakfast burritos. So I had some Spanish rice left over and I wanted to use this smoked chorizo that I had gotten. Plus I had some... Um, Tennessee Pride sausage there that you'll see that I need to use up. So, yeah, I'm going to make a couple of Mexican burritos tonight. Uh, breakfast burritos for dinner. So, we'll take you along and show you how I do that. Okay, I got the butter in the pan melted to get ready to put the eggs in. And the sausage is over here cooking. I'm going to brown it up. Then I'm going to put the chorizo in here. And we'll be right back. Okay, here's our egg on the stove. Kind of fluff it up a little bit. Sausage is still over there cooking. I'm just going to get this a little fluffy and take it off and kind of cut it up to put it in the burritos. Very, very simple. What's oh, two eggs there? There's the chorizo. Cook it on the stove. Okay, guys, here's my burrito, taco, whatever you want to call it, bar for my breakfast burritos. Um, I've got my sausage right here. I've got both of the Tennessee Pride and the chorizo both in there. I've got my egg there, and there's my cut-up hash brown patties. I put those in the air fryer, cooked those. There's the leftover rice. I just put it in the microwave and heated it up. And I've got my salsa and my cheese back there, and I'm not sure if I'm going to add sour cream yet or not, but that's what my little taco bar looks like. So I'll show you as I make them and show you what it looks like plated up. Okay, guys, I'm going to start assembling my burrito here. Put a little bit of salsa on there. I'm going to put the salsa on first. There is no... It's pretty good. There is no rhyme or reason to how to do this, I guess. And I'm going to put my cheese on there. I'm going to put a little bit of rice. Oops. Okay. Then I think I'm going to put a little bit of meat. And I'm going to put some of my hash browns on there. Getting a little full. <laughs> some eggs on there. Yummy, yummy. Looks delicious. And then we'll just close it shut. And I'll probably make another one of these and that will be dinner tonight. And there they are, folks. I'll plate it up. Don't they look yummy? Can't wait to dig in. Bye-bye. It's Wednesday, hump day, halfway through the week, however you want to look at it. And we're going to go pretty simple tonight. We're going to have 
baked hot dogs in the oven. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Pretty simple. But uh, just need some hot dogs and your favorite fixings, which I've got right here. And some hot dog buns, which I haven't gotten out yet. And then I've just got a pan here lined in foil. Going to set my oven preheated at um, 350. And this will take about 45 minutes in the oven. And then we're also going to have some crinkle cut french fries in the good old air fryer over there. And that's going to be dinner. So I'll show you how I put these uh, hot dogs together. Okay, we're going to start putting these hot dogs together, and I like to slice mine down the middle, even though they're open on the side. You can buy some sometimes that aren't open on the side, but of course, you know, can't be picky right now about what you can find in the grocery stores. So these are ballpark uh, buns that I got, and so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to squirt a little bit of mustard right down the middle okay then I'm gonna spoon out some sweet relish Then I've got my ballpark beef hot dogs, and it's got to be beef. <laughs> I will not eat a hot dog unless it is all beef. So, beef kind of falls apart a little bit, but that's okay. It's all good in the end. Okay. Then we're going to take our canned chili. Now, I have made these with homemade chili, but um, like when I have leftover homemade chili, but of course, don't have none. So, I'm just using the Great Value Hot Dog Chili Sauce, which works just fine. And these are messy, so that's why I like to um, coat my paint or put the aluminum foil down underneath them so then clean up's not so bad. And you can put onions on these and ketchup, you know, whatever you desire. And then the last thing I'm going to add is some sharp cheddar shredded cheese. We want lots of that because we want them cheesy. Cheesy, cheesy, cheesy. And of course, you could use any kind of cheese you wanted. You could use pepper jack. You could use, um, you know, jalapeno cheese, whatever. Whatever you want. So that's it. So the only thing left to do is I'm going to cover this with some aluminum foil then I'm going to put it in a preheated oven at 350 and I'm going to bake these for about 45 minutes. I'll probably check on them in about a half hour see how they look um, but it usually takes about 45 minutes and so when it's done I'll bring you back and let you see what it all looks like. Okay, here's the hot dogs, hot out of the oven. Um, I checked on them at uh, about 30 minutes into their cooking, and they look pretty good. So then when I went to take them out at a quarter, or after they'd been in there for 45 minutes, um, I felt like they needed a little more cheese on top. So I sprinkled some more cheese on top and took the aluminum foil off and let them sit in there for another five minutes or so. 
They don't look the prettiest, but that's because these buds open from the side, so they kind of fall apart a little bit. And because I split them in the middle. But, um, trust me, they taste really, really, really good. So I'll show it to you. I'll plate it up. So here it is. I'll plate it up. I know it doesn't look the prettiest, but trust me, it is so, so good. And it will definitely be a crowd pleaser with your kids. So if you're looking for something easy... And, you know, like I said, today is Wednesday, hump day, you know, halfway through the week. Just need something to get you past it. This is a great meal to do that. Okay, it is Thursday, and I am going to attempt to make homemade beef stew for the first time. I've looked at several different recipes, and I'm just going to kind of wing it and... Kind of do my own thing, tweak, you know, a little bit here and there from different recipes. So, what I've got is I'm going to do it in my crock pot. And from what I've seen, um, it's probably going to take about four hours on high. And uh, maybe a little less because most recipes call for two pounds of stew meat. And I have one pound, so may uh, not take quite as long. So what I have here is I've got some of the little mini um, red and yellow potatoes, and I'm going to cut those out. I've got my beef um, stew mix here. And then back there, I have some beef broth, some Worcester sauce, um, some minced garlic, some onion powder, um, there's my carrots that I'm going to put in it. Um, I know a lot of people put like celery in it, but I'm not much of a celery fan. So I'm not going to do the celery and I'm not going to do peas because I do not like peas. Um, I have some flour because most recipes tell you to coat the meat in the flour. So I'm going to do that. This is one thing I'm not sure I'm going to use. That's tomato paste. Because some recipes call for it, some don't. Um, so I'm not going to add it at first and see what it tastes like, what the broth kind of tastes like. And then see if I think it needs to be added. Because personally, as far as canned beef stew, my favorite is Denti More. So I'm kind of trying to get something that tastes something similar to that. And I like the old-fashioned Denti more. And uh, when I say that, I mean from years ago because I kind of feel like I tried a can of it here recently and I haven't had it in years. And to me, it did not taste the same. So, um, that's the taste that I'm going for. And then I also picked up a packet of the McCormick Beef Stew uh, seasoning mix. So, um... I'm going to get off here, get everything prepped, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm back, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to combine everything. I don't know that there really is any rhyme or reason on how to do this, but um, I've got my vegetables here cut up. Um, I have the carrots. I already bought those cut up. I did cut them up, some of them up in little smaller um uh, uh, pieces and then I cubed my small potatoes so I'm going to pour those in here first and then I've got the meat as you can see here I've got it all floured up uh, lightly so I'm going to pour it in here And then I think the next thing that I'm going to add is the beef broth. So I'm going to add, start adding, um, I think, two cups to begin with. Okay, so there. One cup. Yeah, I 
Let's eat two cups. There'll probably be plenty. So I'm going to do that. And then, let's see. The next thing I think I'll add is, let's see. Add some salt and pepper. I did forget to add that a while ago to my list of things that you'll need. So I'm going to salt it real, real good. And pepper it very, very well, too. Okay. Then, let's see. The next thing I think I'll add is some Worcestershire sauce. And... Most of the recipe is called for like a tablespoon, so I'm gonna, oops, forgot my lid was on, um, I'm gonna do about a half a tablespoon. That's good. Alright, then I'm going to add some onion powder. I'm just going to eyeball it. That's good. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is add some of the minced garlic. So I think I'm just going to add a teaspoon of that. And here's a teaspoon. Okay. And then the last thing to add will be the McCormick seasoning. So there's the beef stew seasoning. And I'm going to add that whole pack. And I've already got the slow cooker set on high. And I'm going to wait to use this. Um, I'm going to check on it in about an hour. Kind of see what it tastes like after some of the, you know, sauces and stuff has kind of... Uh, simmered together and stuff and then see what I think. I think I am going to stir this up a little bit though. Before I put the lid on it. have high hopes for this so <laughs> I'm really hoping that it turns out if not I've got a frozen pizza in the refrigerator for backup so I'm good to go I always like to have a backup when I'm making a new recipe that I'm not quite sure about because I'm very very picky about my vegetables and my meats and how they're cooked and you know all that oh, I'm not gonna put those on there okay so that's it so we're gonna come back in about an hour check on this uh, do a little taste test and oh it's not even plugged in <laughs> I've got it turned on but I don't have it plugged in so I'm gonna have to plug it in I thought wow well, it's not putting off any heat okay so I'm gonna come back in about an hour we'll do a taste test and see if I think if that Paste needs to be added or not. Till then, see you later. Okay, guys, here it is. I'll plate it up. And let me say, I've already tried it. It's really, really good. The one thing, well, actually, there's a couple of things that I would change. First of all, it is very, very salty. So, I would definitely not add any extra salt like I had done. And I would also try to get um, 
the low sodium in like the uh, beef broth and also in the seasoning pack to reduce the amount of salt. I'm going to say that I like a lot of salt, but even though I like a lot of salt, I still think that it's quite, quite salty tasting. So, that is one suggestion I have. The other suggestion is after it had cooked in the um, crock pot for about an hour, I came in here and I checked on it. And I wasn't quite liking the taste of the broth. So I decided to add the tomato paste to it. Now, I added a half a can, probably. And so here's the can right here. So I only added a half a can of this. The next time, I would probably only... Um, add a fourth of the can because the broth has a slight and I'm not going to say it's overwhelming but it has a slight tomato-y taste to it and it has more of like a vegetable soup type of broth taste to it I would say versus a beefy stew broth. And I am not a fan of vegetable soup at all. So, the next time, I would just add a fourth of that can to it. Because I think that it was just like the perfect thing to add to it. To make the consistency of the um, <coughs> broth, you know, thick, <coughs> but not too thick. If that makes any sense. So... That's the only two adjustments I have to it. Otherwise, I think it's really, really good. I'm very, very happy with it. And then I also made um, my own Texas toast. And basically all I did was use some Texas toast bread, white bread. And I uh, squirted some squeezed butter on both sides. And then on one side, I put a little bit of garlic butter. And I put it in the oven for about two and a half minutes on both sides. And it's very, very good too. I tried a piece of it already. But I'm going to show you what this also looks like in the crock pot. Whew. Look at that steam. So there it is in the crock pot. But yeah. Definitely a winner. Um, I will definitely be making this again. But like I said, I'll do those few tweaks. I'll make sure that... Uh, I use as less salt as I can, and I will only also uh, just do a fourth of the tomato paste. But otherwise, yummy, yummy, yummy. Okay, it's the end of the week, and I'm going to be honest, I've kind of been slacking on cooking. It's not that I've really been slacking, it's just that I've had a lot of leftovers for the things that I have cooked, so I just haven't cooked a whole lot this week. So I only had, I think, three recipes to share so I'm going to add in this bonus recipe here, which isn't really a dinner, but it is a salsa from our local Mexican restaurant called Hacienda. It's a knockoff version of their salsa. So I'm going to show you how to make it. And here's the ingredients that you're going to need. You're going to need a 7 ounce can of the jalapenos and these have carrots and onions in them. Um, I checked on the back and that's what it said to for the recipe. So you need a 7 ounce can of that. Then you'll need a 28 ounce can of tomatoes and um, it didn't say if they needed to be peeled or anything but I'm assuming yes. So I got the peeled tomatoes there um, and you're going to drain that. And you're going to combine those two things um, and kind of make like a puree. So I'm going to do that here in my little chopper here, my little KitchenAid chopper. Then you'll also need two tablespoons of, it said, garlic salt and two tablespoons of salt. And you add that at the end. So I'm going to add the garlic salt first and see what I think before I add the salt too. Because to me, I just think it's like a little redundant to add salt 
when you've already added the garlic salt since that has salt in it. So I don't want it to be overly salty. So I'm going to add the garlic salt first and see if I think if it needs just some regular salt. So like I said, the recipe does call for two tablespoons of garlic salt and two tablespoons of regular salt. And then the last thing it also calls for is a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. So I'm going to get ready and I'm going to uh, put the jalapenos and the potato, or the potatoes, and the tomatoes into um, my little KitchenAid chopper here. And then once I've done that, I'll come back and show you what else you have to do. Okay, guys, I'm back. Okay, I blended everything up. Um, like I said, you blend the whole tomatoes. You drain those well. I don't know if I said that or not, but you drain, drain that can, and I drained it very well. And then I put the uh, whole tomatoes in there, and then I put the jalapeno can in there. And I did not drain that because it said not to, but there was juices and stuff, so I'm hoping that was right. But... Anyway, I put it in my little KitchenAid chopper. It's kind of like a little mini food processor. I absolutely love this thing because it's great for like little small things like this. I have a big food processor, but really like this one for small um, tasks in the kitchen. So anyway, I put it in there and it's kind of like a puree. So the next thing it tells you to do is to take your crushed tomatoes and again, it doesn't tell you to drain these, so we're not going to drain them. But it says to put these in a large bowl, which we're doing. Hey, Jackson, it's all right. That's why I didn't film uh, me doing the puree, because I knew he would be barking, because he does not like the sound of it. That's what he's thinking. He's thinking I'm going to... Turn this on again, which I'm not. Okay. So then it says once you've poured your crushed tomatoes into your bowl, then you take your puree here, and it says to just add it slowly to the tomatoes and mix. So that's what we're... Whoa. So much for slow, huh? <laughs> This makes a lot. Okay. So we're going to mix that a little bit. Then it says to add your salt and your garlic salt. So, like I said, we're going to add the garlic salt first. So, okay, there's one teaspoon, or tablespoon, not a teaspoon. And here's your second tablespoon. Put that in there. teaspoon not tablespoon so uh, I'm hoping that was not too much I have a feeling we're not going to be adding any salt <laughs> it was supposed to be sorry about that it was actually supposed to be two teaspoons not tablespoons so I'm mix that up very very well Grab 
grab a chip. I'm going to taste test it. I think it's pretty spot on. I'm gonna try another one. I do think it needs a little less garlic salt though. <laughs> oh yeah, this is good. Definitely don't think I would add the extra salt. Um, definitely only add two teaspoons of the garlic salt and not two tablespoons like I did. I mean, it's still good. I like garlic, so. But this is very, very similar to the Hacienda salsa. So, locals, if you like the Hacienda salsa, definitely try it. It's a little spicy, I will say that. And it might be just the brand of jalapenos that I use, but it is definitely a little spicy. Probably a little more spicier than the Hacienda kind. But very, very good. So definitely two thumbs up for me for that. Definitely give this a try, even if you're not local. Just try it because everybody raves about Hacienda sauce and chips. So really, really good. So, that's it. That's going to be it for the week of what's for dinner. Um, I'm sorry there wasn't very much, but like I said, I just had a lot of um, leftovers to work with this week. And it's just me, myself, and I, and my fur baby, but he could eat some things. And otherwise, you know, if I have leftovers, I, I will try to do what I can with leftovers. Because I hate to waste food. So anyway, hope everyone had a great week, and we'll be back next week with more What's for Dinner. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, I had to come back and show you what it all looked like, plate it up, because, you know, that's what we're about here, plating it all up. So wanted you to see it. It's yum, yum, yum. Can't wait to dig into this, and this may or may not be my dinner tonight. I don't know. I um, haven't decided if I'm going to fix me a bowl of uh, leftover beef stew or not, but... This is definitely going to be uh, a snack for tonight. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.